Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about one of the closest stars to us that might actually harbor an Earth-like planet and that actually might be habitable as well. We're going to be talking about a star known as Tau Ceti, and we're going to be exploring this system in more detail. Welcome to What The Math. So, okay, 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 we've talked about a lot of various systems that have Earth-like planets, and many of them have been in the news, like, for example, TRAPPIST-1 system, um, the Proxima Centauri system, and all of them often claim to have these Earth-like planets, but the only problem is that they really are not Earth-like at all, because a lot of those planets are usually completely tidally locked through their parent star, meaning that it's always the same side that's facing the star getting super hot and the other side gets super cold. On top of that, many of these stars are often what's known as the flare stars or they're actually very, very active, meaning that they, they produce a lot, a lot of really dangerous flares that can easily strip atmosphere and water from any planet in the system. So it's really not the TRAPPIST system that we're going to be looking at, and it's not the Proxima system, but it's this other star that you may have never heard of before. Now I'm going to go to simulation here, known as uh, nearest 400 stars to us. And somewhere out there, somewhere out of all of these stars, there's actually a few that are very interesting. And today we're going to be taking a look at the closest such stars, that is known as Tau Ceti, and we're going to actually locate it right now. It's only about uh, 12 light years away from us. And there it is. Uh, so this particular star is very, very interesting, and today you're going to learn why. And so uh, this is actually, as you can kind of see, a very sun-like object. It's actually the closest star to us that is under the same classification as our sun. So this star in constellation Cetus is one of the most interesting objects uh, that are out there that you can actually see with your naked eye. So let's actually go into a new simulation here. And we're going to place Tau Ceti right here. And just as a comparison, here's our sun. Basically, size-wise, they're quite similar. This one is about 78% smaller um, in terms of uh, the actual size or so in terms of the actual mass. And so its size is about 70% as well. Um, but in terms of everything else, it's actually very, very similar to our sun. Its temperature is only um, about 400 degrees cooler. Um, its composition for the most part is the same too, although it does have a lot less metallicity, meaning that it doesn't have as many non-hydrogen and non-helium elements. Um, it's also what's known as a G-type star, meaning that it's in the same class as our sun. And most importantly, it's actually much less active than our sun, meaning that it doesn't actually have as many flares. And this implies that if there is a planet uh, somewhere in the system, it actually very likely will not have any problem maintaining atmosphere and maintaining liquid water. Unlike in systems with red dwarfs, where that becomes a huge issue unless you have a strong magnetic field. Alright, so let's click on this button right here called Add Planets to Star. And guess what? We've discovered at least five so far. That's right, there's at least five known detected planets, all of them slightly larger in terms of mass than our planet Earth, and all of them de designated as B, C, D, E, and F. So let's maybe explore them and talk a little bit more about this system, because this is actually one of the most interesting systems that is close to us, because it's basically a sun-like system. It's a star that is very, very sun-like and has very similar uh, properties to it as well. And as we know, our sun is actually relatively rare. It's not as common out there in the galaxy as some of the other stars, specifically red dwarfs. So this here, Tau Ceti B, is probably, we can cross this out because it's going to be a little bit too hot. It's a little bit too close to the star. Um, its mass is about twice the mass of Earth but its temperature, even without atmosphere, is like over 250 degrees Celsius. So maybe not this particular planet. Also, maybe not Tau Ceti C, which in this um, video game is actually a water world. But let's actually take a look at the important factor here. Let's take a look at the habitable zone. So everything in red is too hot for liquid water to exist. Everything in blue is a little bit too cold. But notice that there, this, this right here, Tau Ceti E, is sort of on the verge, on the border. 
As a matter of fact, this is the particular. This is the one planet in particular that we kind of ve are very interested in. So we know that Tau Ceti E is um, about 4.3 masses of our planet Earth, so it's bigger and more massive than Earth, and we know that it's very likely going to contain. Um, enough material and enough surface um, area to get to a temperature of about 68 degrees Celsius. So here the temperature even without atmosphere would be pretty warm. If there is atmosphere it might actually be a little bit hotter and so chances are that this planet might actually be hot but it's also very likely that if it's um, albedo, if it's re reflectivity is very high, it might actually be relatively comfortable. So this right here might already be a colonizable world for us. But another planet on the outskirts right there has even a higher chance. So this right here is Tau Ceti F. It's, um, it's about 6.6 .6 masses of Earth. And in this particular uh, simulation, it's presented as a gas giant. But we think that it's what's known as a super Earth. So it might actually have um, not water, not hydrogen, but actually silicates. So, for all we know, it might even look like an actual terrestrial planet, which we're going to try to create here right now. And so, here we go. I had to add a little bit more iron for it to look more realistic. And so, um, this might be an actual terrestrial planet with you know, obviously higher gravity and um, possibly much, much larger diameter. And of course, uh, mass that's about 6.6 .6 times higher than Earth. But... Um, the chance for it to actually have a really good temperature for liquid water to exist is very high because it's sort of on the outskirts of the habitable zone. Um, but if it has thick atmosphere, its temperature would be actually very, very comfortable, 10 to maybe 15 degrees Celsius. So it's all dependent on atmosphere, which of course also is dependent on whether this particular planet has at least a little bit of magnetosphere. With just a little bit of magnetosphere, it might actually be enough for it to protect itself from the Tau Ceti star, which already doesn't really have that many flares anyway. And so this particular system gives us quite a lot of hope for actually finding an Earth-like, um, habitable, colonizable world for us. So, uh, obviously the star is very similar in terms of temperature, it's, um, it's also, it has no close companions, so there's nothing for um, any kind of an object to disrupt the orbits of these planets. And it really just has two problems. One of those problems is, of course, the fact that it has somewhat lower metallicity, as a matter of fact, five times lower than our sun, meaning that there's just not enough rocky material in the system. But it's possible that this rocky material actually ended up in those planets. And the other problem is that uh, we've discovered that this particular system has something unusual in it. It has quite a large amount of debris, specifically asteroids and comets, flying around pretty much everywhere. So there's like 10 times more stuff flying around. And this, of course, um, increases the chance for a dramatic collision that might destroy any kind of life that may have formed on these planets quite dramatically. So because of this debris, we think that maybe just maybe there is no actual life or at least any complex life. If it could have evolved, it would have been probably uh, eliminated by these collisions. And also, this also, uh, obviously creates a bit of a hazard for our colonies as well. But that's not enough for us to stop um, looking at this star. As a matter of fact, this is actually something that might even encourage us to, to come here because these asteroids can be used for mining. And so, all in all, this system right here is very likely going to be one of the prime candidates for a future exploration mission simply because um, of the uh, amount of similarities with our own sun and uh, because this star is about a billion years older than our sun we think that if there's anything that evolved here we um, would very likely be able to to find traces of it on the surface of these planets now we, we actually have tried to listen to extraterrestrial signals in this system using SETI telescopes and for about 200 days, uh, it was a continuous sort of listening process. We found nothing. Um, but uh, we don't really know much about the atmospheres of these planets. And that's the next part for us. We actually want to find out if this planet, for example, actually has this thick atmosphere. 
And if it does, it means it's a potential candidate, candidate for future colony. And so this means that in 2018, when James Webb Telescope launches, th this will actually be one of its first targets. It's going to be looking at the atmospheres of these planets because it's one of the closest stars to us that is very, very, very sun-like. So you may have heard about TRAPPIST-1, you may have heard about Proxima b, and now you've heard about Tau Ceti, which only has been in the news back in 2012 and not for a very long time. I hope that uh, the scientists will actually find out something else really cool about the solar system very soon because I honestly think this is probably one of the first places we should consider visiting. And with a cool name like Tau Ceti, you know what? I think we should definitely send some kind of a mission here to find out if there's anything worth settling on. And so anyway, so there is Tau Ceti. Let's maybe just maybe explode it before we finish this video. and create a bit of a supernova, which actually is not very realistic because a star of this size would not create a supernova. But in this game, everything is possible. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone else who might enjoy watching these videos and who enjoys watching through video games. And look at this, I just evaporated this planet completely. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And looks like I've evaporated the entire system. Everything here is turning into nothingness. Oh well, maybe next time.